Hey everyone, this is Fago Franklin III with New Stitch Media. Right now I have a special guest with Daphne uh, Clark. She is the actress with the Fosters. First and foremost, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm well, I'm well, just trying to hang in there with all this protesting and um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So first and foremost, tell us, uh, some of our viewers, how you doing first and foremost and what does this protest mean to you just in general? Um, well, I'm taking each day as it comes. There's a lot going on in the world and sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. Um, I absolutely stand for the protest. I actually participated in one um, a week ago. Uh, very first time protesting. It was a great experience. Um, and I, you know, I stand for, um, or I stand against uh, racism and police brutality. Um, and uh, I stand for the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's really important, especially in this day and time, um, for us to be doing something like this, especially during a pandemic, um, where we were all quarantined at one point, and now we are, you know, fighting um, racism as a as a country, um, which is a ripple effect, a domino effect, and it's really dismantling a lot of uh, things that are set in place to hold uh, black people down. So um, I'm actually very proud of the movement, and uh, I support it wholeheartedly. And with you being an actress and a person of color, um, tell me your experience about just being an actress first and foremost. What, what motivated you to start being an actress as, as well as uh, your experience with the Fosters? Well, um, <laughs> that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my life um, is the motivation behind me becoming an actress um, because it's not a conventional life. Um, I was born to uh, a mentally ill mother and a father who wasn't ready to be a father. And uh, at that point, I was um, raised by my biological aunt. Um, and so that life didn't really seem um, common or normal. Um, and so it allowed me to dive into the world of acting and to escape what I was going through as a child and trying to figure out, you know, everything that was happening with me. Um, and my family. So becoming an actress really gave me an outlet. Um, not to mention that it's my talent and gift from God, uh, but it really allowed me just to kind of escape and to just go into the world of different characters, different stories. And within that, I found that I wasn't alone uh, with what I was going through in my real life. Um, the Fosters came along at a time where I was very uh, new to LA. I think four, four years into LA. And um, it actually was art imitating life. So it was really my life on screen. Uh, it just happened to be one of the groundbreaking shows uh, that tackled society, societal issues. And um, it really, um, it reached so many demographics um, from old to, to young people, uh, black, white, everything. Um, and so it was a blessing for me. Uh, because I was really, I was really proud to be at the show, be, to be a part of the show, but it was really helping me cope through being a black actress in Hollywood as this, as her first, you know, groundbreaking role into the industry. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, what are the pros and cons with being um, in the industry? What of the what? I'm sorry, repeat that one more time. What What do you think? To you, honestly, what are the pros and cons uh, with being an actress? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> another loaded question. Um, being an actress or being in this industry isn't something that you just wake up one day and decide to do. This is something that you really know that this is for you. You want to do it um, because it's the most unstable profession in the world. Um, and you have to go after a dream no one else sees but yourself. Um, and sometimes you're the only person supporting yourself and then you find yourself building a whole new support system that's not your family. Um, it's, it's strangers that you are, you know, coming up with in this industry and fighting uh, to get roles with and, um, you know, dealing with rejection and, and all of that stuff that comes with it. So um, I know people see it as a glamorous job um, but this is something for people who are really meant to do it 
this is the only thing that we know. Um, and with that, we want to, you know, play characters and do things in this industry that impact the world, that change lives. It's not like we just want to get on camera and, you know, start doing stuff. We want to really tackle the roles that are going to hit home. They're going to, you know, talk about the difficult issues in the world and things like that. So there's pros and cons, but I would say there's more cons than pros sometimes. Um, and you have to deal with that. Um, but only the strong survive in this industry, um, especially during a pandemic where everything shuts down and you have nothing to do in a sense. Um, but then it also is good because then you can create your own content um, and choose the roles that you want to play um, and write and direct and do all the other things in the industry that you've wanted to do besides just be in front of the camera. In the next five years, what roles would you love to play? Um, I would love to tackle uh, a mentally ill person, someone with uh, a physical ailment, um, just those challenging roles that make you go to a whole different level as a person in general, um, not just an actress, uh, but something, you know, roles that really challenge your creative side and your artistic side. Um, those are the roles that I look to play. Um, my most famous character that people just think I am this person day in and day out is a thug chick. And even though I love this character, that is not who I am uh, in real life all the time. I do have her inside of me when I need to pull her out, but <laughs> that's just not, I'm not walking around, you know, thugging it out. So, um, but just roles that are opposite of that. You know what I mean? I would love to play leading lady, you know, girl next door, best friend, just a range of roles that I can play because I know I have it inside of me to do that. Um, I want to eventually um, do my one woman show where, um, it chronicles my life from from birth till now and why I became an actress and it tackles 10 different people that have all molded me into the person I am today. Uh, so that is one thing I want to accomplish in the, in the actual next year so. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What advice can you give um, young, young actors as well as actresses um, advice as far as getting to that next level with being in the field? Um, I actually get asked this a lot in my DMs, which is so funny. Um, again, being, being an artist in general is something that you have to know that you want to do. Uh, there is no plan B. Uh, there is no, okay, if this doesn't work out, this is, this is what I'm going to fall back on. Um, you have to work really, 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 really hard. And by that, I mean on your craft. You have to hone your craft um, and everything else will fall into place. They say, you know, you need to get an agent, you need to get headshots, you need to get it. That's all 10% uh, of what you need to be doing as a whole. You know what I mean? Um, but really knowing that this is what you want to do, chasing this dream, because that's going to be the majority of what you're going to be doing until you actually land something. Um, and then just working really, really hard, um, networking, um, you know, putting yourself in a position to be seen. Uh, nowadays, everything is relied upon social media and that's where people are being discovered. Um, and, you know, it's not like when I first moved to LA 11 years ago, you know, people really now you just turn on the camera and just start doing stuff and they're like, okay, as long as you have 10 million followers, you're good. <laughs> but it's different now. Um, but this is something that you really have to want to do and you have to make content that not only entertains, but is impactful and kind of makes people think um, and changes the world because that's what, that's what the world is shifting to. It's a movement now. It's not just, let's just be entertained. There's so much that's going on um, and the industry is changing by the day that you have to keep up with the times. Awesome. Yeah. Um, with, with a lot of downtime, what type of movies are you into first and foremost and what are you watching right now? <laughs> Um, I'm a drama girl at heart. Love me a good drama. Um, but I love comedy and I love action. I love suspense. Um, I have been kind of throwing it back a little bit and kind of going back and rewatching films that I've watched in the past that I may have not, um, understood at first, or it really didn't hit me, uh, the first time. And sometimes when you rewatch something, you really get it. You know what I mean? 
Um, so I am doing research uh, for my one woman show. So I've been watching Sybil with Sally Fields um, and Split, which is the new age uh, version of that. Um, Imitation of Life, which is a great film about what's going on in our times right now, race um, and racism and all that um, stuff. And just films that, that move me, films that make me think, you know, those are the types of films I'm into at this moment, so. So what actress or actor you look up to that's like one of your favorite actors or actresses? <sighs> Ooh, gotta think. <laughs> well, there's so many um, because I'm such a versatile actress. And so I, I look to certain actresses uh, for their style of acting and mm -hmm. um, you know, their artistry of acting. Cicely Tyson, forever is is just the greatest i think of all time viola davis um i love me some meryl streep mm -hmm. never go wrong with meryl streep um i also have been watching angela bassett a lot late a lot mm -hmm. lately because i just love her mannerisms in her films and 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 um how she kind of you know carries herself so i've just mainly been watching really strong women okay um and who who, whose films I can relate to. And the last question is, uh, what advice could you give people about taking the leap of faith towards their dreams? Well, that's what it is. It's a leap of faith. Um, when I decided to move to LA, I literally had a dream in a car. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I'm going to LA. Um, and it was nothing that I really thought it was gonna be at first. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I had a rude awakening and I was very green and naive, uh, but I did it. And that's mm -hmm. the part about it. Um, you just have to take that first step and then everything else will be fine. You have to believe in yourself because no one else is going to believe in you unless you believe in yourself. Um, and so just believing in God is, has also been a big part of it because my faith at times where I couldn't pay my rent or I couldn't, you know, I had to choose between gas and food, or I didn't have a job or things of that nature. You know, you have to really, um, your faith comes in and kicks in. It's there all the time, but during those hard times, like now is when you're like, okay, God will, you know, he'll supply all my needs. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just knew, I knew I was going to make my dream come true. It was just a matter of time. And that's kind of all it is. It's, it's our time versus God's time. Um, and we may be like, God, uh, can you hurry this up? And he may be like, not ready yet. <laughs> so just believing in yourself and just, just going out there and doing it. That's all, that's all it takes is doing it. Amen. There you have it. Everybody, this is Daphne Clark. Um, thank you for allowing me to interview you. And it's been a very insightful and blessing interview. Thank you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Amen. All right, it was nice talking with you, and I'll get you later. All right, you too. All right, now. All right, bye. All right, bye-bye.